So the last video got cut off when I was doing the complements theorem. And what I wrote was that the sine of pi over 2 minus theta equals the cosine of theta. Remember, pi over 2 is 90. And the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta equals the sine. And that's because the sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60. That's what this is saying. Sine of 30 is the same as cosine of 60, and cosine of 30 is the same as sine of 60. That's the end of our four theorems notes. Now we're going to pick up with our basic trig identities. So um, we're going to do a little discovery activity here where um, I, you need a calculator for this, and you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, not in radians. And we're going to pick a number between 1 and 180. If we were in class, I would have you, I would just call them volunteers, and we would pick random numbers. So um, I looked at my notes from last year, and these are the numbers that the students picked, um, at least in one of my classes. The first one was 124 degrees. And you're going to put the cosine of 124 in your calculator, hit enter. And then whatever answer you get, you're going to square it. And then you're going to round it to two decimal places. I'll show you exactly what I mean on um, the calculator here. So I'm going to make sure that my calculator is in degrees, and it is in degrees. So I'm going to take the cosine of 124. I'm going to get an answer, and then I'm going to square that answer. And I'm going to round to two decimal places. I could round to more, but just to keep it simple, I'll round to two. And I get 0.31. So I got 0.31. I'm going to do the same thing with sine. Sine of 124. Hit enter. Square it. And I get 0.69. Then I'm going to take the sum of these two. 0.31 plus 0.69. And I get... Let's do our next one. Let's do 12.12. Uh, .12. So cosine of 12.12. .12. Square it. I get 0.96. Then I'm going to take sine of 12.12. .12. Square it. I get 0 0.04. Add those up, I get one. Oh, let's try another one. How about uh, 58.3 degrees? So let's go ahead and do cosine 58.3. Square it. I get 0.28. Sine 58.3. Square it. I get 0.72. Add them up, I get 1. Well, look at that. It works every time. So what conclusion can we draw? The Pythagorean Identity Theorem. That the cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared equals 1. Sometimes we write it like this because it's the cosine we're squaring. We're not squaring the angle, we're squaring the cosine, or we're squaring the sine. So you can write it either one of those ways. All right, so let's look at number one. If the cosine of theta is 4 fifths, find the sine of theta and the tangent of theta. Now, in all of these problems, there's two things we have to remember. We need signs and numbers to be correct. We are so used to just worrying about an answer that we don't think about all possible answers based on signs and numbers. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to draw our little unit circle here. This is my plus, 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 minus, plus, Minus, 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 plus, plus, minus, minus. This is always cosine, sine, 
tangent, cosine, sine, tangent, cosine, sine, tangent, cosine, sine, tangent. Now, when the cosine is 4 fifths, notice 4 fifths is positive. Where is cosine positive? Cosine is positive here, and cosine is positive here. Well, tell me about the sine. Well, the sine is positive here and negative here. So this is going to be a positive and a negative answer. The tangent is positive and negative, plus and minus. So when I give my final answers for sine and tangent, it's not just going to be whatever number part I get. It's going to be plus or minus that number part, plus or minus that number part for tangent as well. If you forget both, you've, in a sense, forgotten half the answers. There's going to be four answers. If you only give me two, you're getting two out of four correct. That's a 50%. That's not good. So we want to make sure that we remember both signs and numbers. Now, in order to find the number part, we're going to go ahead and use our Pythagorean identity theorem. So we have cosine of theta squared plus sine of theta squared equals 1. This is what I'm using to solve number 1. 4 fifths squared plus sine of theta squared equals 1. I'm going to square 4 fifths and I get 16 20 fifths plus sine of theta squared equals, rather than writing 1, I'm going to, since this is in 20 fifths, I'm going to write this as 25 20 fifths. going to subtract 16 25ths from both sides. That's why I changed that to 25 25ths. And I get that sine of theta squared equals 9 25ths. Take the square root, and I get that sine of theta equals, because I put in the square root, I'd want plus or minus, but i got to check here. Do I actually want plus or minus? I do. So it is plus or minus three fifths. That's my answer for sine of theta, plus or minus three fifths. I have both. Tangent, okay, I already know the answer is going to be plus or minus. So tangent is always sine over cosine. I'm not going to worry about the signs right now because I already know that I want plus or minus. So sine is 3 fifths, and if you want to put the sine in already, you can, plus or minus, divided by 4 fifths. So we have plus or minus 3 fifths times 5 fourths, because remember when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. The fives cancel, and I get plus or minus 3 fourths. So I can say that tangent of theta equals plus or minus three fourths. And I've answered both of my questions for sine and for tangent. Okay, let's go to number two. Um, in number two, I've already drawn your circle here for you. It says that the sine of theta is square root of two over two. Notice it's positive. And it's from pi over two to pi which means they're telling me which quadrant it's in. From pi over 2 to pi, this is pi over 2, and this is pi, so it's in this quadrant right here. This is my x is negative, y is positive, which makes tangent negative. So cosine, sine, tangent. We're supposed to find the cosine. I already know the cosine is going to have to be negative. And I have to find the tangent, oh, and the tangent's right here, that's also going to be negative. So no matter what I get, my cosine's going to be negative, and my tangent's going to be negative. And that's it. Not positive or negative, just negative. So let's go ahead and we're going to use our theorem again. I always write it down to show what I'm using. And every time I write it down, it's helping me to remember it. I don't know the cosine. I know the sign. I 
cosine of theta squared plus, when you square a square root, it just becomes 2. Square 2, you get 4. I'm just going to leave it like that for now and then write this as 4 over 4. Subtract two-fourths from both sides. And I get that the cosine of theta squared equals two-fourths. Take the square root, and I get cosine of theta equals, I'd normally say plus or minus here, because I put in that square root, but I look up here and I only need negative, so I'm just going to say negative. The square root of 2, I don't know, so I'll leave it. The square root of 4 is 2. So there's my answer for cosine. Now I'm going to do tangent. Tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. So that would be square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, I noticed these are the same number, except one's positive and one's negative. When you divide a number by the same number, you get 1. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So the tangent of theta is negative 1. And I double check. Is my tangent negative? It sure is right there. Okay, let's go to this one at the bottom. Given that the sine of 10 degrees is approximately 0.1736, okay, it's I'm going to kind of draw 10 degrees right here. And I don't know what my cosine is, but I know that my sine is 0.1736. Find another value for x between 10 and 360 so that the sine is also 0.1736. Now, one of the things you have to realize is that all of my angles are measured in terms of the horizontal. According to the x-axis here, if this is 10 degrees, this is 10 degrees, this is 10 degrees, and this is 10 degrees, they're all going to have the same cosine and sine. We don't know what the cosine is, but we know that the sine is 0.1736. So this ordered pair here is also going to be 0.1736. Here we're going to have 0.1736. Here we're going to have... 0.1736. However, since it's the y coordinate, it's positive here, it's positive here, it's negative down here, and it's negative down here. So the other one that has a sign of positive 0.1736 is this one right here. This is the one we're looking for. These two have 0.1736, but negative 0.1736 because it's below the x-axis. The y-coordinate down here is negative. And we also know that sine is negative in these two quadrants. So I've got to figure out what angle is right here. Well, if this is 10 degrees, and this is 10 degrees up from the horizontal, and we know the horizontal is 180, if you go back 10 degrees, 180 degrees minus 10 degrees, we get 100. And seventy degrees.